Hello, this is Mono Dial. And this is Christopher Van Leveren. And this is the Artificial Life Simulation Using Neural Networks Optimized with Genetic Algorithms, our project for the Practical and Artificial Intelligence, CS4701. Our goal in AI Practicum CS4701 was to learn how to utilize the following three concepts learned during the course of CS4700 in an applied project. The first is reinforcement learning, the second, feed-forward neural networks, and the third, genetic algorithms. Our code structure involves several parent classes and subclasses. The biggest parent class is the class uh, world. It contains most of the state of the simulation. A world contains all of the constants for the simulation, as well as a list of all the food and agent objects. A world is also responsible for all the following functions, like running genetic algorithms, resetting agents, generating agents and generating foods, and getting proximities, and painting the world. A world contains many world livers. They could be either agents or food. An agent is basically a neural network. Each agent has a, his own neural network uh, that is specific to him, uh, and each neural network contains several neuron layers, uh, basically the input layer, the output layer, and some hidden layers, and finally neurons. Neurons are basically perceptrons and they are the fundamental building block of this entire neural network. During the simulation, 1,500 food pellets are randomly distributed across the world and 100 agents are also created. And that happens at every generation. Correct. An agent has two sensors. A front sensor, which allows it to see food wait in front of him in between two whiskers, and a circular sensor, which also doubles its mouth. Any food within it can also be sensed and eaten. Okay. <laughs> Each agent has a unique ID to identify him, and also an energy indicator. So in the next part, we'll be able to see some agents that have been randomly generated at the beginning of each simulation. If you'll notice, they're incredibly dumb. All that they do is spin around, and they don't even eat the food that's right around them. And then they die. Geniuses. Now, after more than 100 generations, we'll see a group of agents that have evolved to a point where they're actually intelligent. You'll see the agents are actually seeking out food. And when they don't see food, they'll adapt to do the most energy efficient move, which is spinning around and not doing anything that costs energy. Yeah, because uh, spinning is free. Exactly. Spinning is free. Mm -hmm. Now we will take a look at an evolved agent in a very close up fashion. If you look at agent three over there, he seems to be following the outside of a food region, keeping it on his left whisker. If you'll notice, he turns a lot when he doesn't see much food, but he turns slightly to the left when he does see food, keeping him in a region where there's almost always food. And now we're going to show the most optimal strategy. Uh, it's to keep consuming food until food finishes, then stop moving to conserve energy, and keep rotating to increase the visible area. And as you can see, this is quite an involvement from where they began, and at the end they just keep rotating. So now we'll, we'll take a look at uh, the first of the various tests that we've done. Uh, the first type of tests are tests related to uh, genetic algorithm changes. So we change the mutation and crossover and carryover rates and basically see how that affects the average fitness of the population. So some of the things that we noticed from these tests was that higher mutation rates ended up finding solutions earlier and ended up being better in the results whereas high crossover rate converged much faster once we actually found optimal agents. And high carryover led to basically zero learning because none of very few new agents were being created. Yes, so basically we are reducing the population that are able to mutate, and mutation is the most important function here uh, in order to find the solution. So now instead of changing the parameters of the genetic algorithm, we wanted to see what happens when we change the structure of the neural network itself like the number of uh, hidden layers and the number of neurons per layers. So as you can see from the plots, uh, the top performers are the less complex neural nets. So that con we conclude there that 
overly complex neural networks may not learn or require more time to learn the same thing. Very simple neural networks will learn faster and potentially lead to better results. And given a fixed number of layers, we can realize that there's an optimal number of neurons. So going above that would reduce the performance and going below it would also reduce the performance. The next thing that we wanted to test was to see if the food distribution made much of a difference. So in the first test, we decided to put only the food into the center. And these are the optimal solutions. The agents spin around and don't eat. Not really a good success. The next test was to see if making the food in a circle made much of a difference. And that was too difficult for the agents to learn. Yes. So what we can take away from this is that if the evaluation criteria is too harsh, the agents might not learn or will take forever to learn. It's also important to note that food location has one of the biggest impact on the learning process. And initially in the first half of the course, uh, our agents were not learning anything. And we realized after a while that that's a result of them not getting enough exposure to food early on. The final type of tests we conducted were tests related to energy penalties. Uh, like, do we punish the agent for being at the edges or not? Do we, do we punish him for moving a lot and changing the number of inputs? And as you can see from the purple plot where we remove the penalty for eating, we see a very high spike at the very beginning. And that indicates that agents realize that eating all the time is the optimal solution. However, you see that the other solutions eventually converge to the same solution, or the same average fitness, which shows that our system is actually eating very efficiently and is as efficient as agents who continuously eat. And counterintuitively, when we actually remove the edge penalty, we get lower average fitness. And that's because at the edges, half of their vision is reduced. And they won't learn that unless we put a penalty at the edges. And finally, when we remove two inputs, the X and Y positions, we actually tend to get better results much faster. And that's because we have a simpler model of a neural network. So finally, some general conclusions. Uh, reinforcement learning with neural nets and genetic algorithm uh, turned out to be a perfect solution for our problem. Agents have shown drastic improvement in signs of rationality and intelligence. And we can conclude that genetic algorithms is as good at, uh, as a good substitute for backpropagation in some type of problems, and at least artificial life simulation problems. So some of the things that we noticed in our simulation was that a high mutation rate was very important for getting out of local maxima and creating agents that were actually solving the problem, unlike crossover, which is great only when you actually found the solution. We also noticed counterintuitively that a simple neural network actually is faster than solving at solving problems than more complex neural networks. And better solutions. It leads and also better to better solutions. solutions. We also noticed that harsh evaluation criteria made it almost impossible to find um, solutions. Mm -hmm. And finally, when we pick the most important inputs and remove the unimportant ones, we notice that we get a much faster and better solution sometimes. And we don't want the inputs to overlap, as in we don't want redundancy. Exactly. We hope you enjoyed watching this video, and we hope you learned something. For more details and more thorough explanations, please look at our report.